here in the Blue Mountains, really tough country. Just to give you an idea, Aboriginal people used to chew on the young fruit of the casuarinas just to get a little bit of saliva flowing so they could get from water hole to water source. This is really harsh country. But what we're going to be seeing are some of the real delights that are now on offer here in the Blue Mountains. Welcome to another episode of Dining Down Under. I'm Vic Cherikov. Benjamin Christie. And Mark McClaskey. And we're cooking up in the Great Dividing Range closest to Sydney in the Blue Mountains, a place first off near the Three Sisters, which is the Pavilion and Blue Gum restaurant. And we're also going to the small idyllic village of Lura and cooking at a converted post office, which is the post office restaurant in Lura. Makes sense. Funny that. And um, Benjamin, what are you cooking first? I'm doing a lamb with asparagus, a little bit of English spinach and semi-dried tomatoes, which are an Australian invention. Yep. Uh, we pioneered this. There's sun-dried tomatoes around the world. Oh, they're passe, aren't they? But these have so much more flavour. And uh, there, you can also take the semi-dried tomatoes and actually enhance them with all sorts of flavours. I mean, native and conventional. All native, yeah. Yep, yep. Okay. And uh, bush tomato? Bush tomato chutney to finish as well. So, okay, right. And Marcus? Mm. Well, Hang my down. dish is actually venison. With the venison, we're going to scent it with some of the gum leaf, some alpine pepper. Alpine pepper's got a bit of a spice, works really well with venison. A lot of people use green peppercorns and fruits and things with it, so I thought I'd also use some pear. Yep, yep. And that's actually, uh, interestingly, an Aboriginal method of food combination as well. The Australian Aborigines often would harvest fruits and cook them with red meat, so um, this is really an extension of that, but we're using two introduced ingredients, venison and, uh, and pears. That's right, and with the venison, it's actually a New, New Zealand venison. Australia has great venison, but New Zealand has 10 times better. <laughs> I think we'd, uh, we'd have a few producers that are uh, writing letters just about now. Oh, great. And uh, my dessert is going to be one of my favourites. This is something that I really like. We're baking, I'm baking bread all the time, and this one is something that you can do with leftover bread. So a wattle seed, and in this case it's a Somewhat, well, they're heavily roasted macadamias. And the reason that they're heavily roasted is that I wanted to get a little bit of bitterness because that's what wattle seed lacks. Now, to make a substitute, if you can't get the wattle seed, you should be able to get the macadamias. You could certainly um, put a little bit of coffee in bread and maybe make up a coffee bread with nuts of your choice. This is going to be cooked into a standard bread and butter pudding. Um, and I'm using some stewed fruits as a compote, and these are kwandongs. Now I so said, big. yeah, I, I did say that very carefully, <laughs> kwandong. It's actually an Aboriginal Wiradjuri word, so it's a local dialect. A what? Wiradjuri is a dialect of okay. Aboriginal, one of the Aboriginal um, cultures, one of the Aboriginal um, communities had a language, the Wiradjuri people named this kwandong. So it's actually a native peach. I'll just show you that there a little bit more carefully. And uh, this is just the skin of it. The seed's been removed. They do taste a little bit of peaches and that's going to be part of my stewed fruit compote. So um, onto the show, we have um, some exciting visuals here for the Pavilion restaurant. You'll see their version of a bread and butter pudding and uh, enjoy this little segment on the village of Lura's post office restaurant. A pâté starter has a reduced balsamic vinegar snaked across the plate and a garlic crouton set in place. Rocket gets drizzled with a Cumberland sauce and a quenelle of duck liver pâté is garnished with fresh sage leaves. Lamb backstrap goes onto the grill at the same time as a shaved pumpkin rosti. 
pre-prepared ratatouille is warmed through and reduced a little. Our fourth component is an onion and spinach wilt to give colour and contrast to the finished dish. And the lamb jus is reduced to a rich glaze. Assembling the dish starts with the sauce being mirrored on the plate. The rosti's next. This gets topped with a spinach wilt. It adds height and look at the colour. The warmed ratatouille goes on top of that carefully balanced, looking for height all the time. And now the rested lamb gets sliced into generous slices and then positioned on top to finish the dish. And then the garnish of a crispy prosciutto is the crowning glory. We skipped down the road to the Pavilion's Blue Gum Restaurant and enjoyed a bread and butter pudding for dessert. The custard mix was enriched with cream and the dish assembled in individual serving bowls. Banana slices lined the bottom of the dishes and buttered bread was interspersed with glacé rye berries. Once the custard was added, the dishes were ready to be steamed, covered in foil until 10 minutes before the end. Notice the baking paper keeping the foil from touching the food. After 35 minutes in the oven, they're done. A sprinkling with Oz lemon gets the aromatics working and they're finished with the final touch of a few glacade ribberries on the top. This could be served with whipped cream, but when I had it, it was great on its own. I feel one of the best uses for capsicum is to roast them. Now with capsicums, they become very sweet when you start to roast them. You need to add some flavour on the outside, on the skin. Although the skin will be removed, the sweetness, the flavour will infuse into the capsicum. Now with this, with the capsicum, we've got a wildfire spice. With the wildfire spice, it smells like pizza in a bottle. It's a very versatile seasoning mix. It's a must. So what we'll do is we'll sprinkle some of the Wildfire spice over there. Wildfire spice has paprika, it has mountain pepper, lemon aspen, it has a lot of the European herbs and spices, oregano, tarragon, but with a native Australian twist. What we'll do is we'll drizzle some of the olive oil on there, open up the barbecue. That's the Australian olive oil, is it, Mark? It is Australian olive oil, yes. Australia produces some of the best olive oil in the world, I feel. So what we'll do is we'll put the capsicums on the on here, char them nicely to get the skin nice and black. The blacker the skin is, the easier it's going to be to peel the capsicums. So we'll close the lid now. Again, convection cooking, get the heat in there, even cooking. It's the best way to do it. Now here's some capsicums that um, I peeled just before. I've taken the seeds out. You can see how soft, how vibrant the colour is. They're going to be super sweet. And mate, you can put these in pasta, you can have them on your sandwich the next day, you can have them in your omelette for breakfast. It's the way to go. And guys, what are you doing back there? I'm just finishing off uh, semi, some semi-dried tomatoes now. So, as I said before, semi-dried tomatoes, Vic, are, uh, are an invention, I guess, of Australia. Nowhere else, nowhere, I've never seen anywhere else do them. Yeah, I think Australians tend to like doing things halfway and then stopping and saying, <laughs> hey, here's a great idea, we're not bothered uh, drying them all the way. Um, taste it and see what you think of this. But no, it works really well because it actually keeps the, um, the tenderness in the tomato. It's it, got you've, concentrated flavour. And you've still concentrated the flavour. So lots of salt. And to do these, put them in the oven, about 100 degrees, at the lower shelf. And the trick with this one is to put something in the door. This allows the moisture to come out of the oven and it doesn't let them, uh, it doesn't get, let them get all soggy, it dries them out. So they'll probably take about three hours at 100 degrees. You could we even just check them from time to time. That's it. Depends on uh, on how much moisture, how much seed, and so on. Yep. I'd like to just make a point with the with the tomatoes. Also, Benjamin, if you turn your barbecue on a high heat, then turn it off. Put them in there overnight. Leave them on the yeah, barbecue. Too. Cook them slowly as the heat dies down. You have exactly the same effect. Oh, not a yep. bad idea. Yep. And if your barbecue's on, you may as well. The other thing, if it's the middle of summer, 
and you don't your oven on anyway, the barbecue is an ideal way of cooking to let it uh, basically take the heat out of the house. Mm, very true. So I've got my lamb here and I've just boned it out quickly before. And what I'm going to do now is, is I've got the st a steel, I'm going to give it a bit of a clean. I'm going to run the steel straight through the meat. I have a few problems here. I'm going to stuff it with some asparagus. And the, today I'm going to use the green asparagus, but you may have seen in the stores some white and purple varieties. Now the difference between the, the purple varieties and the white variety is the white is actually the same as the green, but grown in the dark, Vic. And That's right. And it basically, it just because there's no uh, light there, the pigments don't, don't come you through. You won't get the plant uh, photosynthesizing, and so you get what? Well, it's the same as uh, Whitloff uh, or Belgian endive, which is actually grown in the dark as well. So all our white salad vegetables and our white um, shoot vegetables uh, are typically grown in the grown dark. In dark. So basically, just stuffing some asparagus in here, and then I'm going to put some semi dried tomatoes in there as well. And this is a if you don't know how to roll meat, this is an easy way to get around it. And if, um, obviously, if you use nice fresh uh, asparagus, which is quite firm, it um, is going to be easy to stuff. But if it's slightly wilted, stand them up in water just for a couple of hours in ice cold water and they'll firm up again. Oh, there you go. I'm going to check my capsicums out the back, I think. See how they're going. So that's in there now, ready to go in the barbecue in a few moments. While I'm doing that, I'll get started on the jus. Just a little bit of olive oil in the bottom. Start the pan. I'm just going to quickly saute off some native pepperberry. This is the ground one. As that's releasing the flavours, I'm going to pour in some, some beef stock, which I prepared. While you're doing that, Benjamin, I'd just like to show how easy it is when you get the skin black just to peel the skin off the capsicums. It just literally tears away. You don't put them in a plastic uh, bag, let them sweat a bit and... I or usually do, I, I just, wanted, tea towel. just wanted to push the point a bit there, mate. No, that's all right. And there we go, they're coming along nicely. What I'd like to do is crust the venison. Now, by crusting the venison, you're going to impart a lot of flavour to it. Venison's got a very slight gamey flavour. Um, the longer you, you, you keep the venison, the longer you age the venison, the stronger the flavour is going to get. That's true with, with pretty much most meats. So how do you age meat? Basically, dry aging is the best way. In Europe, they hang their meat in cool climates. In Australia, we're not that fortunate. It's quite warm, isn't we it? We have to chill it. We have to chill it. Keep it in the, in the cool room or your fridge. The best... Do you cover it? Do you... The best thing to do is actually buy it cryvacked. Um, which is shrink wrap basically. Yep. There's no oxygen, oxygen in there and it ages without having any diverse effect on the meat. Or well, what I like to do is actually cover it in oil. So put it in a container that you've got a lid on but literally put a good inch of oil on top of it uh, so that you occlude the oxygen, you uh, eliminate the oxygen. You'll get a bit of graying of the meat but it really does bring up the interesting flavours. Okay, so what we're doing here is just putting some alpine pepper. The rest of the dish will be doing some native Australian herbed pasta. This is a native minted pasta. Um, it's got a lot of herby notes. It works really well with the, the venison. We've got the sweetness of the capsicum. We've got mushrooms and we've got warrigal greens. Excellent. Just finishing off tying the lamb up here before I take it out to the barbecue, which I put on earlier so it's quite hot. A little bit of salt, always never enough seasoning. And we'll take this out to the barbecue now. As I said earlier, you want to get the barbecue really hot. The lamb, we're serving, we're going to serve medium today, so searing on the outside really seals in the flavours and, and doesn't overdo the asparagus or the tomato in the middle. I've also put the jus on out here, just so I can look at it on the wok burner. And instead of putting it on the barbecue and getting the bottom of the pan dirty, the wok burner keeps the pan clean so you can put it straight on the table afterwards. I was going to put fennel inside with the asparagus and the tomato, but what I've decided to use is aniseed myrtle, which is a, uh, what would you call it Vic? I'd call it my favourite herb. It's, um, it's interesting too because it's actually a pick-me-up, but uh, the aniseed myrtle goes on after the food's cooked and then you let the flavours infuse. Oh, it smells like fennel. 
Smells, well, it's subtle and sweet. A lot of people don't like aniseed or licorice flavours, but this one is, is got a subtleness to it that works really, really well with a whole host of things, and it makes the best ice cream in the world. So when I've finished the lamb, what I'll do is I'll put a crop bit on the top and yep, go and then the flavours infuse all the way through. It sounds good. It's great in, uh, in jus as well. So we'll see that turning around, getting a bit of colour on top of the lamb. How are you doing, Mark? Sorry, mate, mate, coming along nicely. What I thought I would do is Drizzle a bit of olive oil into the pan, into the pan and we'll get the meat. Pop it in there, get the pan nice and hot so we're not stewing the meat. There so it's going to be cooked really quickly. Again, hot pan, yeah, same, it has, as, same as Benjamin. That's right, it has to be cooked very quickly. We don't want to uh, overcook the venison, it needs to be served rare. Again. Drop the pasta into the water, that's going to take about 11 minutes. Now with the, the pasta water, as I've said in the past, I can't emphasise enough, you really do need to salt your water to flavour the pasta. We'll leave that. We'll turn the meat over. Nice golden colour there. And what I'm going to do is just basically do one pot cooking today. I'm going to use the juices of the meat to impart the flavour through the rest of the dish. We're going to add some shiitake mushrooms. Yeah, they're going to take the longest to cook. And some of the super sweet capsicum. It's such a vibrant colour. Plenty of sizzle. It certainly is, Vic. Okay. And right at the very end, we'll add the spinach. We don't want to add the spinach too early, it's going to die. We've got wild greens there as well. We'll throw some of that in. Or if you don't have that, an English spinach. Warrigal Green is actually quite uh, widely available now. It's grown in the back lots of, um, of Paris. They even call it uh, Tetragon there. Okay. Um, it's almost a naturalised weed. It's available in Asia, uh, used in Lab Lab vegetables in Indonesia as well, side dishes, vegetarian side dishes. And um, of course, it grows all through Australia and various parts of the world. And in America, in fact, the US is the source of so many um, seed supplies for growing it if you want to grow it at home. That's excellent to know, Vic. Just add the spinach now. Meat's coming along nicely. There we go. And how are you going with the bread and butter pudding there? Yeah, Vic? while uh, while you're sautéing that, I've literally just buttered the bread. That's where the bread and butter pudding comes in. The bread is old and um, and dry, so it's going to suck the flavours of the anglaise up quite uh, quite strongly because the bread's dry. You can actually even sit these before baking them, and then literally it's just a matter of assembling. A, um, a little bread and butter arrangement and our fruits. We could even add a, um, mate I might just steal your spoon if you don't mind. Oh, go for it. Thanks mate. Have spoon, we'll, uh, we'll travel. That's the one. Can even add a few little fruits down around there. These are rye berries, glassade rye berries. That imparts the, the sweetness to the dish. Well and also uh, as you bite into a rye berry you'll get the cinnamon and clove flavour. Great. So these um, started off with a, a buttered Mould, cut up the bread, whack it through, the anglaise on top of that, and it's done. And as always, the recipes will be on the website. But this is a really, really simple dish to do and highly recommended. And with that dish, Vic, how would you cook it? Well, I'm going to uh, microwave this to finish it. And uh, to get that going, all that has to happen is that we literally just, uh, you can bake this also in a bain-marie. Okay. And uh, there's all sorts of variations on this. You can also soak the bread in cream to get it um, fully, uh, fully soaked and, uh, and quite moist. But that literally is ready to go through into the, um, into the microwave, or as I say, into a, a water bath and cooked. Excellent. How are you guys doing? Great. My um, pears are cooking away nicely here. I've just added the pears just to warm them slightly through. Benjamin, you all set? I'm about to put the spinach on now. I won't be a few moments. Doing the finishing. Okay, well from now on what we're cooking, we'll just summarise our menu. We have lamb loin with English spinach, semi-dried tomatoes and bush tomato chutney, alpine pepper with gum leaf venison on rainforest herb linguine, finishing with wattle seed and walnut bread and butter pudding with stewed fruits. So because these were cooked in the microwave, I'm just browning them up, just finishing the browning with the torch, just to give it a little bit of visual. We'll kill that, hide the torch, and start plating up there. 
Mark, how are you doing? Just about to add the pasta. We've drained that. We're going to throw it in here, mix all these colours through there, the flavours. While you're doing that, I'll just a quick referral here. I've got some stewed kwandong, stewed fruits on the um, in some heavy syrup. And the reason they're in heavy syrup is I wanted the fruits to stay whole. If I wanted to cook it down to a jam, which is the base, I uh, would have cooked it in water first. So there's that. Mark, your plating, Benjamin, you getting there? Oh, the lamb looks... Lamb perfectly cooked medium rare, what I say. Even if you do so, say yourself, that's Cooked right. perfectly in, great. There we go, so we put that on the plate. Pop one of the pears on the top. Gentlemen, I've beaten you again. <laughs> it's Come always on. the way, Vic. We have, a, uh, we have a guest waiting. We're coming, mate. There we go, drizzle that with gum leaf oil. I actually uh, like to often dilute the gum leaf oil, just brush it on as well. Excellent. We'll talk a little bit about that, gentlemen. Thank you. And Jane, welcome to the show. Thank you. Jane's been, Jane has been powdering our faces for... Uh... Do you want to taste that, mate? I'm hogging it. Oh, <laughs> great. So dig in, have a taste. Mark's delicious dish of alpine peppered venison on rainforest herb linguine was topped with this poached pear. Ben described his creation as wine-drenched lamb, which was beautifully complemented with a bush tomato relish. And my wattle seed and walnut bread and butter pudding was crowned with its kwandong fruit compote. You do need to be very careful with eucalyptus oil, I find, because some people are very sensitive to it. So a little bit goes a long, long way. Fix. And I, <laughs> it's a bit, yeah, indeed. Well, the idea is always to um, have just a little bit and actually taste it on the first, mm. maybe the second bite, the third bite, then the, the eucalyptus oil, or the gum leaf oil comes through quite carefully. And the, a word of warning, don't use ordinary gum leaf oil, it has to be food grade. Not real good for the liver otherwise. We've got a great feed. What did you think of it? Dig in. It's beautiful, it's very sweet. Very okay, nice. too sweet for you? No, very nice. Oh good, good, good. And you taste the wattle in the bread? Yes. Okay. So join us next time for another episode of Dining Down Under.